What's up, everybody? Welcome to Water. My name is Tyler, and I'm your real life remembrancer. In today's video, we're tackling part two of the Learn How to Kit Bash video. If you haven't seen part one already, definitely click the link in the description down below because that video pertains directly to this video, and this video will not make sense without watching the first one. For everybody that's already seen the first video, let's just jump right into it. All right, everybody, so jumping in here, we're just gonna do a quick little overview of some of the tools that we're gonna use that we didn't use in the first video, mainly just some different types of glue. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the Tamiya Plastic Cement. Now, if you've never worked with this stuff, you absolutely have to add it to your arsenal. I swear by Tamiya Plastic Cement. Uh, it looks just like this. You can get it on Amazon at your local hobby store, uh, eBay, you know, anywhere, anywhere that you can get hobby supplies. This stuff is liquid gold. You paint it right onto your model and it fuses that plastic together forever. It's beautiful. Then what you're looking at here is the exact same thing, but you'll notice it's gray. This is something called sprue goo. Sprue goo is something that I want to talk to you guys a lot about kind of throughout this video. Uh, what it basically is, is you take maybe a jar of half of Tamiya plastic cement. You throw some bits of, you know, old leftover sprue in there and you get a goo. Now I tend to run a, a thinner sprue goo. You can see it's still pretty liquid. It's still flowing. You can run a thicker sprue goo and use more sprue and get a more thick goo uh, kind of consistency. But we'll talk about uh, talk more about that rather in a moment. This is Loctite Super Glue Gel Control. I just call it super gel. <laughs> uh, this stuff is another golden ticket to especially working with resin. The Tamiya plastic cement only works on plastic and does not work on resin. Most people go for what you see on the right, which is Loctite super glue. It's just a regular liquid super glue. And most people tend to grab that because it just makes sense. You know, they're just buying super glue. Uh, it st oh, sticks things together. Great. The problem with the liquid is it sometimes leaves a residue that the gel does not leave behind as much, and the gel is also just superior in pretty much every way. Finally, I've got some toothpicks off to the right there. We can use those for lots of different applications. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump out the model here. Uh, the main thing that I have left to do from last time, other than obviously bonding everything, is uh, clearing off all the mold lines. That's something that I left for myself. That's obviously the least favorite part of the project, but Clearing mold lines, you know, it gives you that nice smooth canvas for your gorgeous paint job and definitely something that you want to consider and take your time on. Now, I will say uh, of all the people that I know, I take mold line removal more seriously than most. And so a lot of this video is just me clearing mold lines, which is why I've sped up a lot of the footage and we're not going to focus on that too much. Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit more about the Tamiya plastic cement and the sprue goo uh, while I go ahead and get some of these mold lines cleared. So the plastic cement, what's particularly great about it is twofold. First, it's extremely quick drying, which means that it's going to uh, bond your parts together within just a matter of seconds. Typically, if you have, for example, a shoulder that you're attaching to a torso, uh, with you know two flat surfaces if you throw some Tamiya cement on there and you stick those together uh, as long as you don't put any undue pressure on that joint within the first few seconds uh, pretty much within three seconds that thing is going to be bonded and you can let go uh, and you're you're good to go right as long as you don't really push on it it's it's going to cure and dry uh, without moving or sliding around or anything like that it also goes on with a brush, which uh, just makes it super easy to work with. You know, obviously something with super glue, you're squeezing it out of a nozzle. You have to be super slow and deliberate. Uh, it's very easy to squeeze out too much, uh, things like that. You know, the plastic cement, it paints on with a brush that comes with the bottle. So all in all, it just makes for a really smooth experience. And if you're working with uh, Games Workshop plastic or any other uh, true plastic, then that's definitely the way to go. And the coolest thing is that it's a permanent bond. It, it literally like melts the plastic chemically and fuses it together. So once it's fully cured, uh, that that joint, that bond will be just as hard to break, rip or tear as the as the actual plastic model. Uh, so, you know, it's going to survive anything that the actual model itself would survive, which is great. Something that I want to talk to you about with the sprue goo, a lot of people don't know about the sprue goo. It's not that there's not YouTube videos and stuff. I mean, if you want to know about it, you can find the information, but a lot of people just don't 
even know to look for it. Um, you know, you kind of have to stumble upon a video like this to figure it out or have somebody tell you on Reddit or something like that. But Sprugu is particularly powerful because ultimately what it is is uh, a guaranteed instant way to fill uh, gaps, panel gaps. Uh, and it just it instantaneously makes all of your models look better. Uh, we all know what it's like to sort of glue two halves of a gun barrel together uh, and have, you know, this line going through the center of the barrel or through the center of a plasma gun or something like that. Uh, you know, on a dreadnought or whatever, and it, it just does not look great. Uh, and so what Sprugu does is it solves that problem for us. Uh, it's obviously only as expensive as the Tamiya plastic cement itself. You take about a half a jar of it. So, you know, use up half a jar. Or, uh, I usually buy two at a time and just sort of uh, use, use one a little bit, pour it into the other one, and then take the remaining jar for the Sprugu. And then you just cut up sprues that you were going to throw in the trash anyway. Uh, into tiny little bits, you know, just a um, half a centimeter long or whatever, and you throw them in there and you shake it up real good. You let it sit for maybe 20 minutes and you're pretty much good to go. It does not take that long to uh, to get the sprue goo working. So it's not like something that you have to sit and wait overnight for it to be ready. Uh, you can pretty much make it and use it right away. So we're going to see the first application of sprue goo here. You can see uh, I'm going, I'm test fitting, dry fitting uh, this section. And I'm basically looking to see where all the areas that I want to fill a panel gap are. So I'm taking the sprue goo now and we're going to look real close here. And basically you can see I'm just going to paint it onto any section where I want to fill a panel gap. So essentially when I stick these two parts together, the idea is that I'm going to squish the model together really hard and this goo is going to squeeze out of the out of the gaps. OK, so that's the effect that I'm going for. So I'm going to take this I'm going to be very careful. You don't want to smush it around one nice push and I'm going to squeeze super, super hard. And you can just kind of see there in the shining of the light that goo has pushed out from the uh, where the front of the torso meets the back of the Terminator armor. And that's that. So basically what happens is there's two ways to, to move on from here. You can either let it dry and then simply remove the excess plastic like a mold line because it basically dries into plastic. Uh, and that's a great way to do it. Another way that you can do it is you can take plastic cement that is not sprue goo, just legitimate thin plastic cement and sort of paint that along the edges of the two gaps. Um, it's something, it's a technique that I'll show you later in this video. Don't worry about that. I'll show you exactly what I mean when we get to the cape on this uh, particular model. But uh, yeah, it's just a really super powerful tool. And like I said, you can remove it like a mold line or while it's still wet, you can take the plastic cement and sort of paint the edges and it'll smooth everything out. So it just kind of depends on what type of gap you have, you know, is it going to be reachable with a hobby knife so that you can remove the um, the mold line or not? You know, that kind of thing is something that you want to consider. So I'm going to go ahead and drill some uh, barrel holes here. And uh, if you've never done barrel hole drilling, it's pretty simple. I take this sharp little tool. You can just take your hobby knife. What you're trying to do is poke a hole in the center of where you want your barrel. OK, because you're going to be drilling and you need to make sure that that hole that you drill is centered. So what you're going to do is you're going to give yourself a nice little pilot hole and a nice little guide for the center of the barrel. You'll see I'm going to take my hobby knife now and just kind of make those holes even bigger. Nice big pilot hole for my hobby drill. I'm using, I think, a one millimeter hobby drill bit uh, on these particular um barrel holes but uh yeah we'll go ahead and stick that drill in there and you just got to be real gentle real delicate especially on these storm bolters when you're doing two holes next to one another uh you want to make sure you don't have any diagonal pathing into the uh actual model itself because what you might end up doing is connecting those two uh paths once you do the second barrel and that might just give you kind of an odd look just take your time, be very patient, make sure you have a nice pilot hole so that your drill goes exactly where you want it. And you don't wanna to drill too deep either because you don't wanna have any negative effects on the rest of the weapon or pop out the bottom or anything like that. So just get it as deep as you need. And uh, yeah, go ahead and clean it up here. I take my hobby knife and I clear out some bevels. Uh, that's not 100% necessary, but it's a nice little touch. 
Uh, and then that's pretty much that. All right, so we're gonna be using sprue goo to connect the hand and the bolter. I used to use this plastic putty. It's something that I still use in a lot of pro projects. Um, it's uh, it's basically a very, uh, very kind of fluid. It, it, do it doesn't, mm, that's not true, it doesn't flow. It's kind of just like a gooey putty. And uh, you can use it for all kinds of gap filling and stuff like that. I still use it with resin all the time because buying UV resin is very expensive. Uh, so yeah, I still use the the plastic putty a lot, uh, like I said, especially for resin, but the sprue goo is absolutely superior when it comes to plastics. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a little glob of sprue goo on the hand. What I'm basically trying to do here is recreate uh, the situation where the bolter was connected to the hand before, where it all kind of like looks like it's from the same mold and all kind of blends together. Uh, you can see here I've put too much so I'm just taking a little bit off on my fingers. I'll just wipe those on the, the little plastic mat there. You'd wanna have just the right amount so that when I push these together, you can see it's kind of at a cocked angle at first, but that's because I'm going to push in to get it nice and flush against the fingers of the hand. Sorry that my fingers are kind of in the way here, but you know, Got to hold it or it's all going to fall apart. And when we pull away here, we should effectively see what looks like an original part. And I think it turned out pretty good. So we're going to do a little bit of that method that I talked about where we're going to take the actual plastic cement that is not sprue goo. And we're just going to paint over what we just did with the sprue goo kind of squishing out. And what that's gonna do is uh, smooth the sprue goo out. It's gonna spread it nice and evenly so that we get a nice smooth transition from the storm bolter to the hand. And once this dries, it's pretty much, I mean, if you look close enough, you might be able to figure it out, but it's pretty much gonna look like a factory part once we're done here. You can see I'm just kind of taking some sprue goo going back and forth. Uh, there was a little bit of a gap on the reverse side that we're looking at here. So I put a little dip of sprue goo in that gap and then I'm taking the Tamiya cement and just sort of painting all the edges. Uh, you know, what you want to do, you can see I'm dragging the sprue goo and the cement over the smooth surface of the gauntlet. Any smooth surface that you have, remember, it's going to dry like plastic. So unless you plan to remove that excess plastic with a hobby knife after it dries, you want to spread with the cement as much of the goo and cement mix that you have sort of evenly across the surfaces with which it's made contact. You can see here once I get it in focus that it's a nice smooth blend. And yeah, it looks really solid. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to very carefully put this down into its little case and let that dr cure and dry. And that should be good to go uh, within five or 10 minutes, honestly, to to the point where I can handle it. So jumping in here, I'm just gonna clean up this uh, shoulder pad real quick. And we'll take a look at that once I've got it all cleaned up. And we're pretty much getting there, ladies and gentlemen. So here, we'll take a look at that. Everything's nice and smooth. And we'll move on. Enjoy the back of my head while I work on clearing the mold lines from the two winged parts. And we'll go ahead and get to the point here where we're putting them on to the model. This is one of my favorite parts. So all I'm doing here is kind of scoping it out, dry fitting again, always dry fit everything. Never put glue on a part until you are confident it's gonna go where you want it to go. We're gonna slot these in right in between the little notches on the back of the Terminator armor. And there's a little notch as part of the wing that goes over the front of the lip of the Terminator armor. And a couple things are gonna happen here. Uh, I'm going to use Tamiya plastic cement and not sprue goo. 
because we actually, or well, you could do it however you want, but I don't actually want these parts to look like they're fused with the metal of the Terminator armor. I do want them to look like they're sort of bolted on after the Termin Terminator armor is manufactured because that's how, that's how I think they're designed and that's how I think they actually are. So I'm just gonna use plastic cement and stick those right on there. They should totally fit in and I shouldn't need the sort of excess goo from the sprue goo because I don't want them to look like they're, you know, all molded from the same piece of metal. Another thing that I'm gonna do here is take those tweezers that we brought up in the previous video and I'm gonna use those to really ensure that I get these wings placed exactly how I want them. Uh, you know, a, a tall sort of oddly shaped part like this with such a thin, narrow contact point is certainly something that's going to be, uh, you know, all it's going to take is is looking at it in the wrong direction for it to kind of tilt out of place or maybe sort of just not quite line up, you know, exactly how you expect it. Um, and so I'm going to take a lot of extra time here to really make sure that, you know, I'm putting this part exactly where I want it, that everything is lined up and that it looks good from every angle. So you'll see me grab the tweezers in a moment here. just to get these fitted in nice and perfect. It's something that, you know, if you get sort of a centerpiece of a model like this wrong, it sort of really stands out. So anytime you're uh, working on a particularly important part of a project, you know, just make sure that you slow down, take your time, really make sure that everything is exactly how you want it. And again, guys, I know that this kit bash is a pretty simple one. We're pretty much just making one Space Marine into another Space Marine. But kit bashing is only limited by your imagination. You can take, you can do giant kit bashes, tiny kit bashes, uh, dioramas, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, you can see I'm taking the cement here and I'm just going to fill these little gaps at the back because it seemed like that was one part that didn't have glue on it. But uh, yeah, you just got to really be, you know, ready to jump in and uh, test different things, try different ideas, try different bits. There's bits that I cleared off for this project that I never ended up using. And that's, you know, it's totally OK. You're just it's it's a it's a iterative process, you know, as you move forward. Obviously, you start with kind of an idea in your head of what you want to do, maybe some bits. Uh, but then from there, you just got to kind of go for it. Getting this cape cleaned up a little bit and uh, just test fitting the arm and everything, making sure that that all goes together. I did mention that in the previous video that I was not uh, not too sure that that was all going to fit together. It ends up actually fitting together almost perfectly in in like a in like a serendipitous kind of way uh, because it, it it's it's like micrometers from not fitting actually. So that that ended up working in my favor. So what we're getting to here is the sort of main event of using the sprue goo to attach these two pieces of this cape that's divided at the center and make it look like it's all one smooth cape. Why Games Workshop wanted to break a cape into two different parts is beyond me. But here we are. So I've stuck the sprue goo in there. I go ahead and apply the cape piece but you can kind of see while the sprue goo has popped out at the bottom, it has not followed through all the way through the crease. So what I'm doing is taking the sprue goo back. I actually take the cement out to spread some of the sprue goo, but I do think I add more goo. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, get just the right amount. Don't want too much because you don't want a giant glob of paint that you got to get rid of on the back there. I take just a little bit just enough to fill that crevice and once it's filled once you have just the right amount of goo in there and everything looks good you take the cement back and you just kind of paint over the well i get i guess in this case i just paint over the whole thing sort of paint over the sides maybe focus more on the sides um, but yeah generally just being able to paint over the goo with the actual cement gives you a lot of control and you can kind of just see, I'm just sort of smoothing out uh, all the areas where the plastic meets the cement and just sort of 
blending it all together, painting it all together. And look at that. We've got a cape that is literally all one piece. Once this dries, it's literally, it's gonna look like Games Workshop printed it as one solid cape. So that is super sick. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. The final piece of the equation here is going to be getting the, well, I guess I gotta clear off this head here. We'll do that real fast. And then getting the arms glued on. And then we're pretty much all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave the shoulder pads and the head out of the build for painting. You'll see how I prep everything for paint. Uh, this is also something that you want to consider for kit bashes is, you know, what are you going to do for sub assembly, if at all? Or what are you going to do for paint, rather? Are you going to do sub assembly? Are you going to uh, just stick the whole thing together? I feel like a lot of people just build the whole kit bash because, you know, you don't really know what your kit bash is going to be until it's done. Uh, and so, you know, that might need to be the approach that you take. But for me, I kind of had a vision in my head. I kind of knew exactly what this guy was going to look like in the end. I bought very specific bits for him. Um, so this was definitely a more thought out kid bash than one where you just kind of just sit down and start gluing things together. But uh, yeah, just always remember that, uh, you know, you can do anything you want. You have the power and uh, don't don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to just explore i know a lot of people the plastic's expensive um you know i i i, I totally get that but you just kind of if you want to do it you just got to do it you just got to try 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 so uh yeah what i'm doing here is prepping for paint so we're gonna go ahead and stick these three little bits to some cork that i have using the tack i don't know if i'm going to make a video about painting this model. Uh, really the whole purpose of this little thing was to show you guys just sort of how to get started kit bashing and maybe inspire you to take the plunge. But uh, I will certainly be showing off the finished model on my Instagram. If you don't follow me there, it is at ways of the remembrancer with underscores in all the spaces because that's how Instagram does it. And we'll go ahead and get these arms attached and finish this boy out. And as we're getting finished up here, there will of course be another outro where you get to see the model nice and up close. And I appreciate everybody watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, if you have any questions about ideas that you have or concerns about kit bashing, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to help you out. I got no problem with that. Thank you everybody for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and enjoy this outro.